Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are going to cover creating and destroying objects in Unity 3D. While this may sound fairly difficult, it's actually really easy to achieve. For this video we are going to create a basic object spawner script and a destroying script as well. As you can see here, I've got a really, I've got a blank scene so we're going to create a really basic level that we can work in. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a 3D object cube and I'm going to set the position to 0, 0, 0 and let's set the scale to 10 by point, uh, 2 by 10. Okay, so that's going to be like a basically a little platform for us. Now the next thing we need to do is actually change our main camera's positioning. Let's change the main camera to be positioned at 0, 2.3 and negative 11 and let's change the rotation on the X a little bit. Let's see what looks pretty good. Uh, let's go 15 degrees. Or 15. And now let's, let's actually go up in the Y. Let's go up to 5 and see. No, let's change it. Let's go to 4. 3.5. Okay. There we go. So I positioned my main camera at 0, 3.5, negative 11, and rotated it 15 degrees on the x-axis. Okay, we have two more things we need to add to this level, and both of those are going to be empty objects. So let's go ahead and create our first one. Um, and make sure you don't create it as a child of anything. It's not really going to matter, but um, just so you can find it a little later on. And let's uh, actually position this first empty game object at um, let's go 7 in the Y and let's change the name of it to spawner okay and now let's just create another empty and let's go ahead and change the name of this one to destroyer and we're gonna do the positioning of this one uh, zero, zero, zero. Let's actually drop it in the Y down to negative uh, 10. And let's change the scale of this one on the X to 30 and the Z to 30. Uh, I know it's empty, but once we add our box collider here, so let's go ahead and add a box collider. You'll see that it uh, now the uh, box collider fills the space or the scale of the object. So that's sort of what we want. Okay, cool. So we've got our basic level going here. So let's go ahead and write our scripts. So for this tutorial, we're going to have to write two scripts. Like I said earlier, a destroyer and a spawner script. So let's go ahead and create those. We're going to right click, create uh, C sharp script, and we're going to call this spawner. And let's create a C sharp script. And we'll call this one Destroyer. Destroyer is not a great name for this script, but uh, it, it'll work for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do our spawner script first, since that one's actually really easy. So let's open it up. And let me just drag it over here. Hopefully that's big enough for everyone to see. Now, inside of our spawner script, we do not need the void start function. We are going to need a public transform spawner. Ooh, actually, let's go spawn position. So spawn pause, public transform spawn pause. And let's go, and we're going to need a public game object spawny. Okay, now inside of our update function, we have a really, really quick if check that we need to run, and then we're going to instantiate objects. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say if input with a capital I dot get mouse button zero, then we're going to instantiate. We're going to instantiate the spawny at spawn pause dot position and spawn pause dot rotation okay let's save that now we can just go back to unity here and it looks like we don't have any errors so now we can quickly move on to our destroyer script so let's go ahead and open that up 
and I'm just gonna again drag it over and drop it in. Now again inside of our destroyer script we don't need the start function so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. We are gonna need a public float lifetime and you can go ahead and set this to a value if you want to. I'm gonna set it to 10 uh, here so it's got a pretty decently long lifetime for a game object. And now inside of our update function we're just gonna basically have um, some, some if statements so let's go ahead and write those out. We're gonna say if lifetime is greater than zero so we're still alive then we're going to say lifetime minus, minus equals time dot delta time okay so basically all we're doing here is decreasing our lifetime if our lifetime is greater than zero now we also want to say if lifetime is less than or equal to zero then we are gonna want to destroy this game object but in this script, I'm actually going to create three different ways to destroy a game object. And so it makes sense to make a function call for this. So I'm going to go down underneath update and just say void destruction. Let's just, yeah, do it with a capital D. Destruction. And inside of this, it's a really simple function call to destroy an object. All we have to do is say destroy this dot game object. Make sure you have a lowercase g there. Okay, now what we can do is inside of this lifetime, less than, if lifetime is less than or equal to zero, we can say destruction. Just a quick function call there and that will now destroy our game object. Now we have one other if statement that we need inside of our update function and basically all we're gonna do is check to see check on the Y positioning of the game object and we're gonna see if that's less than negative 20 because if it is we really want to destroy it because at that point it's way off screen so again we're just gonna say if this dot transform dot position is less than or equal to negative 20 then we can just call destruction again and that will destroy our game object now we do have one final uh, Unity method that we that we need to call here, and it is actually void on collision enter. And inside of this, uh, as parameters, we're going to pass a collision col, and we are going to say if col wow col dot game object dot name is equal to destroyer then we're gonna call destruction again whoops okay now that should do it for this script hopefully we got everything right in order to check we can just come back out and see looks like we've got an issue here Oh, okay, I see the issue. So when I wrote this out, I said if this dot transform dot position. So that's actually comparing a vector value with an int value. So what I should have done here is say if this dot transform dot position dot y because the height or the up and down is the only thing we care about here. So make sure you fix that. Now I'll go ahead and save that. Okay, cool. Now that looks like it's pretty good. Okay guys, now that we have our scripts built out, our level built out, we have just a few things left to do. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a box for us to spawn, so our spawnee. So let's right click, 3D object, and let's create, uh, instead of a box, let's go with a sphere. Spheres are kind of fun to watch rolling around. Um, and that sphere is really boring, so let's create a new material, just right click create material, and I'm just going to call this sphere mat. And let's change the color of this to something a little more fun. That's kind of cool looking. Add it to our sphere here. And if we go back out, now we need to add a rigid body. That's really important for this uh, tutorial. So just type in rigid body, press enter. Make sure you leave gravity or use gravity checked. And that should do it. What we need to do now is just drag our sphere out. We can just drop it into our assets and now let's delete the one in the level now we have one final thing that we need to do here and that's actually add our spawner script to, to something now we don't have a character controller within this level so I'm just gonna add it to my main camera so let's just click add component and if we type in spawner 
click enter. And then now we can set this up. So what we need to do now is just drag our sphere into the spawny position and our spawner into the spawn position. Now I think I actually forgot to do something, so let's click on sphere real quickly. And I did, okay? What I forgot to do is add the destroyer to this object. So let's click on this spear object in our assets and just add the destroyer to it. And from here you can play with a lifetime if you wish. Okay, so that should do it. Let's click play and see if this works. Okay, so if I click, it looks like it's working. It's kind of impressive that those balls are just uh, stacking like that. And it, as you can see, if I hold down the button, it just sort of shoots out a ton of these all at once. Um, and if you're watching, uh, you can see that they are some sort of disappearing and uh, like that one just disappeared. They're just randomly disappearing and that's it running into lifetime. Now, if it is going off the screen, it should be disappearing as well. Uh, it's hard to see in full screen mode. Let's see if I can get one to shoot out the back way. Doesn't look like it. So let's press play here. And just as a quick test, let's not maximize on play here. Press play. And let's watch what happens when we get several going. Now these two are going to run off. One, two, yes. So it looks like our destroyer is in fact working. So I think that's going to do it for, for this tutorial. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.